I'm Dave from boyinaband.com, and today we'll take a look at Contact 4, a sampler that comes in the complete 7 package from Native Instruments. Features and versatility. Now, for a sampler, two of the big things you'll want are to make it easy to find samples and to have a lot of samples in the first place. Well, with 1,299 patches, Contact has the latter covered, and with the library, it almost has the former. I'll explain more later in the video. Now, the search bar down here, if we go to the database, is quite useful. It makes it pretty easy to look for what you want without having to scroll through all 1,299 results to find the Zerner samples you were looking for. Clearly. Now the basic parameters you'd expect are there. You've got the attack. And release. Giving you quick access to some simple shaping. Some ruby reverb so it's not too dry, so you can take it really dry if you wanted. Take that release back down. And then really wet. If you want it to be in some sort of hall. Where zunas are traditionally played, I believe because I clearly know about Zunas. And however, this is just one of the rack instruments. So for instance, if we load up the uh, YMCK kit, we're presented with this synth drums rack. Then if we look into the modules section here, we can see some of the more custom effects. We've got everything from stereo modeling and saturation, all the way up to cabinets and choruses and compressors and everything in between. This gives you a whole host of different options when sculpting your sound. Well, in theory. I can't seem to get them to drag across, despite that deceptive looking little drag icon. Which I suppose is trying its best to be helpful, but clearly isn't really cutting it. Now maybe this is just a problem for me, but it's kind of limited how much I can tell you about these devices. If I squint, then I can tell you they probably look kind of cool. But I can't really show you much regarding how they sound. Kind of frustrating. Usability. Contact's user interface has similarities to that of Reason, a virtual rack that you can drag the instruments into. This is both a good and a bad thing, since it's not always obvious how the routing works. For instance, if we go back into the libraries, and if we find a sample that we want for some reason, Banzai 23, it opens up in the rack as you'd expect, however, it defaults to the next MIDI channel as you can see here, it says A2. Now it took me a good while to figure out the reason that my keyboard didn't seem to trigger the new sample that had loaded up. Only that one. I imagine most people only have one MIDI controller, so it seems kind of counterintuitive. In fact, for a VST like this, you'd think it'd only load up one sound at a time. In that sense, it's more geared towards setting up a live performance, in which case this would be really useful. Fortunately, if you drag the sound on top of the uh, device in the rack that's currently making sound, it keeps the MIDI channel and you get the new sound. But if you're the kind of person like me that forgets little things like that, it can result in those infuriating few minutes of trying to figure out what just went wrong, which can stop inspiration in its tracks. Another little niggle in the database, loading things up from the big list down here is no problem. If we get rid of these, any of these will just quickly load up no problem. But once you start sorting things in the group mode, which has Native Instrument's recurrent pattern of really effectively categorizing the different sounds available, say if we wanted a synth lead that's more modern, not vintage, and we can't do anything, it doesn't want us to. We have to kind of note down the name of it, go back to the instrument thing, and search for Android. Again, it might just be a problem for me, but it's one of those workflow frustrations that just should not be there. But once you've got things loaded up, however, the options in the rack are nice and clear. The design is fun, and for a reason user like me, it feels very natural. Quality. Now, I might have mentioned a few frustrations in the usability section, but there's no arguing with the quality. All the real-world sampled instruments from the default library sound awesome, particularly those orchestral bits, like the strings,
Then there's the brass. Percussion. What was that? And these choirs are awesome. They've even gone as specific as having different vowel sounds for each choir, so you can almost make words out of them if you wanted to go in depth as that. Contact 4 is frickin' useful for sampled live instruments, but the synths are pretty good too. I'm not such a fan of vintage synths, but there's some decent ones on offer in the synth rack. Really big and warm sounding, they must have some EQing or something on them compared to conventional oscillators since they seem to have a sweet power to them even without the effects. In Complete 7 there's also a bunch of other libraries, including these pianos, if we close this down, that I think sound great, but then again I'm not massively experienced when it comes to discerning the nuances of different types of pianos. Overall, if you treat Contact 4 as an alternative to hiring session musicians, you'll find it seriously worthwhile. Orchestral elements fit in with most genres of electronic music nicely, so I think it's worth at least a look for producers of fat tunes and relaxing ambiences alike, and those synth samples might help bolster an otherwise weedy section from a more conventionally made lead or bass. So I'd advise you give it a look. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boy in a Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave P. Brown. And if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boy in a Band forum at boyinaband.com forums.
and sign up so you can share your songs to get new fans and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day!